Hi. Welcome to Homeopathy Medicines. Today in this classic homeopathic materia medical lecture discuss about homeopathic medicine Thuja Occidentals. By Dr. Farrington, MD. Before starting this video please subscribe to this channel. We need support from you to make this channel more beautiful and more informative. Now going to discuss about Thuja Occidentals, its uses and symptoms. The remainder of the hour we will devote to Thuja Occidentalis, the last member of this group, and we will have ample time to consider it fully. The history of the introduction of this drug is a little novel. Hahnemann received in his office on one occasion a patient who complained of some symptoms about the genital organs, which were, to say the least, suspicious. There was a thick purulent discharge from the urethra, with burning o urinating. There were also small pimples, attended with itching, about the glands penis, and some swelling of the parts. Hahnemann charged his patient with having contracted gonorrhea. This was stoutly denied by the patient, who, by the way, was a theological student. However, on the principle prevailing in every court to consider a man innocent until he has been proved guilty, Hahnemann determined to give the young man no medicine, and directed him to report in three days. At the end of that time he came back well. Hahnemann was puzzled. He questioned the patient closely, but found no cause. The young gentleman remembered, however, that as he sauntered through a garden a few days before, he picked some leaves of the arbor vitus and chewed them. This led Hahnemann to investigate the properties of Thuja, when he discovered that the theological student had told the truth. However, Thuja must not be immolated in psychosis, because it has other interesting actions on the system, especially upon the nervous system. While you must remember that these nervous phenomena may rest on a psychotic basis, you should also know that they may exist without the presence of any such taint. Gravogel tells us of the hydrogenoid constitution in which the poison of gonorrhea acts most virulently. If one with this constitution contracts the disease, he is more apartment to retain the constitutional taint. This constitution may even exist independent of a psychotic taint. In its victims vaccination is most injurious. When you find a patient suffering from vaccination, the virus being pure, you may set that patient down as belonging to the hydrogenoid constitution. We have two antidotes to these bad effects of vaccination, silicea, which suits almost any of the symptoms, even convulsions, and thuja, especially if diarrhea results and the vaccine pustules are very large. It was on account of this last named symptom that Bo Anning Ozn recommended thuja in variola. He gave it just so soon as the vesicles began to turn into pustules, and he claimed to have thereby prevented scarring. But to return to a study of the action of Thujin on the nervous system. The patient exhibits a manner which is hurried and impatient. He talks hurriedly. His movements are unnaturally active and hurried. His temper is easily aroused. Even trifles make him angry and excited. Some of the gentler emotions are awakened. For instance, music causes weeping and trembling about the feet. There is a form of insanity or mania in which you will find Thuja the only remedy, and that is one in which there is the fixed idea in the patient's mind, that he is made of some brittle substance, and he will not permit himself to be approached for fear that he will be broken. This is not the antimonium gridum condition. It is not an irritability of mind that drives anyone and everyone away will not permit oneself to be even looked at, but it is a symptom that comes from some fixed delusion as to his bodily composition. Another singular characteristic of Thuja is one that was first met with in an old maid. She experienced a sensation as though a living child were in the abdomen. This symptom has suggested the use of Thuja in pseudosiasis. With these symptoms of the nervous system indicating the drug in melancholia, and other forms of insanity, we find that there are many disturbances in the circulation, ebullition of blood, in other words. Still further as illustrating the action of this drug on the nervous system, we find various forms of neuralgia occurring. Thus it is indicated in the form of headache known as clivus, in which the patient has a sensation as though a nail were being driven into the vertex, 
or into one or the other of the frontal eminences. Thuja may also be used in neuralgia, affecting either head or face or both. The pains are of an intense stabbing character, and are well nigh unbearable. If the patient sits up these pains almost drive him to destruction, they may even produce unconsciousness. He, therefore, maintains the horizontal posture. The pains seem to begin about the face, about the miller bones and eyes, and go back towards the head. It is a neuralgia which reminds us of that of spigelia, but which we distinguish from that of the last named remedy by the direction of the symptoms. In spigelia the pains begin in the back of the head and come forward. After detailing to you these unique nervous symptoms, I pass to state the application of the drug to psychosis. Remember that these nervous phenomena may or may not have a psychotic basis. Thuja is a remedy which tends to alter the psychotic constitution, to change the soil on which this poison grows. There are two elements which make up disease, they are the elements of the disease itself, and those of the constitution in which it grows. The psychotic constitution to which I have referred, modifies every subsequent disease, and that, too, whether there be any urethral discharge or not. In gonorrhea, you may use thuja when the discharge is thin and greenish, and there is scalding pain during urination. After urination, there is a sensation as if there were a drop of urine remaining behind. Warts or cantilomata appear on the genitals, at the anus, about the perineum and upon mucous surfaces. I have treated one case in which the wart formed on the center of the tongue. This was speedily cured by Thuja. These warts may have a seedy look, or they may be of a cauliflower shape. Cauliflower excrescences are especially a partment to grow from the cervix uteri. In other cases, these warts are moist and ooze a glutinous fluid. Sometimes, we find ulcers about the genitals and these bear very much the appearance of chancroids. They have a dirty yellow base with hard edges. Very characteristic are such ulcers if they seem to have originated from warts. Sometimes, we note deep fissures, or furrows about the anus, on the perineum, scrotum or glans penis. These are quite deep and are covered with pus. There is sweet smelling sweat about the genital organs. The testicles are often involved, one or the other of these organs, being drawn up in consequence of contraction of the cremaster muscle. The testicle is swollen and aches as if bruised. There may be balanorrhea, that is purulent inflammation of the inner surface of the prepuce, and of the sulcus back of the corona glandis. In the female organs, we find the cauliflower excrescences which I have already mentioned, fungus growths of venereal origin about the genitals, cantilomata with thick green leucorrhea corresponding to the thin greenish yellow bleat of the male. Again if a gonorrhea be checked by injection, by cold or by any other influence, constitutional symptoms may arise which call for thuja. Especially is this remedy indicated if the complication be articular rheumatism, or prostatitis. The hair becomes dry and splits at the ends, the scalp scaly and covered with dry scurf. Thuja is even the remedy when iritis appears, especially when accompanied by cantilomata on the iris. The eyelids are inflamed and have a warty look also. Ozina may be an additional complication. When thuja is indicated the discharge is thick and green. Another very common symptom indicative of a psychotic taint, for which you may use thuja, is decay at the root of the teeth, the crowns of the teeth being apparently normal. Other symptoms worthy of mention are pustules, which have considerable resemblance to those of tartar emetic, and chilliness during urination, nervousness and restlessness during both night and day. I propose now to devote the remaining moments of the hour to the consideration of the remedies similar to Thuja in the above mentioned conditions. One of the nearest allies to Thuja is Pulsatilla, in that it has Ozina with thick greenish discharge. In Glate, also, the remedies have the same discharge, it being thicker under Pulsatilla. Then, too, gonorrheal rheumatism, orchitis and prostatitis, are just as characteristic of Pulsatilla as of Thuja. Calibicromicum is useful in Ozina occurring in psychotic constitutions, the discharge being yellowish or more often greenish. The nose feels unnaturally dry. 
dark greenish plugs are hocked up from the postnasal space. Nitric acid resembles thuja in the condylomata or warts. It is also of use in ulcers, when they are ragged in outline, and in enlarged tonsils, whether these affections be of syphilitic or of gonorrheal origin. Nitric acid also has moist fissure at the anus which is present, as you know, under thuja, balinorrhea and thin greenish leucorrhea. Nitric acid has, however, to distinguish it from thuja, more aching pains in the bones, especially in those localities devoid of muscular tissue covering as along the tibia, and over the sternum and cranium. Staphysagria suits long filiform condylomata. The system generally is depraved as shown in the sallowness of the face, the dark rings about the eyes, the spongy gums, the yellowish white skin, and the great debility. It is especially indicated when there has been previous mercurialization. There is generally induration of one or the other testicle. I would like to mention here jacaranda. This is a South American plant that was first proved by Muir. It is an excellent remedy for balinorrhea and for red chancroid or chancroid-like sores about the penis. It has been proved conclusively to be a good remedy. Coralium rubrum is an excellent remedy for chancre-like sores that are very red. Mercurius resembles thuja in the iritis, in the balinorrhea, and in the green urethral discharge and in the rheumatism. The difference lies here, in Mercurius, sweating aggravates the symptoms, as does also the warmth of the bed. Thuja has this symptom which is not often met with, but which saved a life for Psenning Ozn, namely uncovered parts of the body only, sweat. Sabina is useful for condyloma to which itch and burn, especially in women. Euprasia is called for when the condylomata are large and look like a coxcomb. Cenobaris is an excellent remedy when there is a combination of syphilis and psychosis. The figwa urts are apartment to be fan-shaped. There is a great deal of itching, especially about the joints. The complement of thuja in these psychotic troubles is nitrum self. Sarsaparilla is indicated when a psychotic eruption consisting of little spots scarcely raised above the skin, often scaling a little, but looking like the roseola of syphilis, and itching intolerably, and worse in the spring, also when a moist eruption appears on the scalp the pus from which causes inflammation of any part which it touches. Psychotic headache is found under sarsaparilla. The pain begins in the back of the head, and comes forward and settles at the root of the nose, with swelling of the nose, moist eruption about the genitals, or between the scrotum and the thighs. Petroleum also has this last named symptom, and in addition another, namely, membranous shreds about the anus. Thanks for watching this video. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon. Comment us your feedback. Like and share this video with your friends and family. For paid and free consultancy online, visit homeopathymedicines.com and mashclinic.com. Thank you. Have a nice day. Stay healthy stay happy.